All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this live webinar as part of our seasonal renew journey that we are exploring every season. Whether you have done seasonal renew or not, whether you've been to Aroha before or not, this is a, a free webinar where everyone is welcome and where we're going to discuss um, a specific topic today, which uh, is movement. So first, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Ben Desard. I, am, uh, I was born in France. And in 2016, I worked at Aroha as a retreat leader for two and a half years. So I got the privilege to, to live at Aroha and experience and witness the power of the retreats that we run over there and how lifestyle and the environment in which we are has a deep impact on how we feel, on how we look, and on the enthusiasm we have for life. I really think this is my big takeaway from working at Aroha is to see that when we do the right things around nutrition, movement, relaxation, meditation, not only we feel good in our body, but we develop a, an enthusiasm for life. We're just more open for connection with others, for exploration. And I really believe that's a, a nice way to look at our wellness practices, if they are effective. It's how, how enthusiastic we are about waking up in the morning and going about our day. So this is really what I hope we can cultivate together as a community. I would also like to introduce a Tim who is here uh, live from Queenstown in New Zealand. Tim works at Aroha and uh, is helping us out today with the technical aspect of this live call. So if I refer to Tim sometimes to uh, do some actions, you, you know who is. Tim, would you like to just say a couple of words to say hello? Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this uh, this little webinar that we've got. It's uh, good to see some familiar faces and some new ones. Hope we get to see you actually here in New Zealand for a retreat one day. But until then, uh, I'll leave it to Ben to bring up this exciting topic of movement, which uh, I really enjoy as well. So Ben, take it away. All right. Fantastic. Thank you, Tim. So first, um, I'd just like to just quickly explain what this webinar is all about and how does it fit within our architecture of the seasonal renew as a as an approach to health and longevity so every three months we come together and follow a scientific based protocol that takes us in a deep state of fasting meaning that we enter a form of metabolism where we use our stored body fat for energy. And we also recycle the parts of the cells of our body. This is called autophagy. And this happens when our intake of protein is particularly low and the body needs to search for protein to break down in order to create new protein. Because we always need to create enzymes, hormones, neurotransmitters, and whenever the intake of the building blocks of this protein is too low, the body recycles itself. And we now understand that this is a fantastic process in order to repair the body because we constantly develop um, inflammation and dysfunctional mechanism in the body and whenever we fast and we activate this autophagy, it's the chance for the body to break down what's not working so that we can rebuild new tissues at the end of the fast. Because when we refeed, we activate stem cells and we are um, able to rebuild a brand new body. So with the seasonal renew, we meet every three months and we go through this five day protocol. We follow a simple menu. So we all have our recipes and from home, we 
we take care of creating this fasting protocol for ourselves. And of course, we do this together as a community and we get together with live calls and a community page. And so by going through this peak experience, because this fasting, this deep fast is really a peak experience where we access deep cellular regeneration, which impacts our health on the long term. But after running the seasonal renew for a couple of years, we really felt that there was a missing piece and that was the self-care in between those peak experiences. Because even though fasting has a very potent effect, what we do in between the fast, how we eat, how we sleep, how we think, all of the lifestyle components do have a, a very deep impact on our health. So we created the Renew formula, which stands for rest, our ability to switch off the stress response and enter a state of regeneration, the parasympathetic nervous system, which we covered last season. So we talked about how to improve our sleep, how to take lazy days, and how to include resting rituals during our, during our day. So that's the R of Renew, which stands for rest. This season, we focus on the E, which is exercise, and we're going to talk about this over the next 45 minutes or so. Next season, we'll have the N of nutrition. So nutrition is what do we eat, but also when do we eat and how do we eat? There's so much to explore about nutrition, and it doesn't have to be too scientific and boring. We can really bring some joy and some some deep meaning into how we connect with the food that we eat. So that will be next season, which um, the next season of Renew will be in August, August 23 to 27. So we'll follow our five-day protocol, but at the same time, there will be daily videos to talk about nutrition. And, uh, and then we can implement the, the various aspects of nutrition for the next three months which is what we're doing now with this exercise. We talked about exercise in the last edition, and now we are implementing little aspects of exercise. And this is what we're gonna talk about in the rest of the session. The last two modalities for the Renew formula after rest, exercise, nutrition are elimination. Elimination has to do with how do we detoxify? Because we're exposed to so much toxins in our environment the air that we breathe, the water that we drink, the food that we eat. The body has a tremendous ability to clear out toxins, but we can support that process by opening our drainage pathways, whether it's through sweat, urine, or stool, even the breath. Those are the main gateways to release toxins. And how do we support the liver? The liver is the organ of detoxification. So we will cover that in two seasons when we talk about elimination. And then the last aspect is the W of witnessing. And so witnessing has to do with our cultivation of self-awareness, being a witness of our choices, being a witness of our thoughts. And so becoming more aware of how we choose to live our life. The practice of meditation, is a fantastic tool to cultivate this awareness. So this is something we'll talk in three seasons from now. Okay, great. So I think we're, we've, this is the, the basic, mm, let's say, mechanism of how we work. We go through a peak experience with the seasonal renew, and then for three months, we do the groundwork of a lifestyle and then we go again through a peak experience and the magic of this peak experience that we do with seasonal renew is that they give us a boost of motivation i'm sure you've all if you've joined the seasonal renew before you've experienced how how much of an internal shift happens and from that shift we realize wow the food that I eat and the, the choices that I make, they have a deep impact on how I feel. 
And, and that gives us the motivation to then do the groundwork of implementing daily habits. Now, the key with those daily habits is to make sure that they are sustainable. Because one of the greatest obstacles to behavior change, to changing the way we eat, the way we move, and the way we sleep, we rest, is our resistance to this change. And if we try on a daily basis to make hard changes, the psychology of lifestyle is not going to be with us. Things should feel simple, easy, light, and enjoyable. That's, that will help us cultivate daily habits. So when today we talk about movement, we're all, we're all different, and we all have different existing habits. So the, the talk of today, I don't want to say, okay, we all have to do this with walking. We all need to walk for 30 minutes um, every day at this certain speed and all do this amount of steps. And then for the lifting, we all need to go three times a week to the gym and do four sets of 12 repetitions of deadlift. It might be true for some of us, but not true for others. So what's more important is to just understand the impact of these things and then figuring out how can I implement certain things in a way that feels easy enough, simple enough, and enjoyable enough so that, yes, I can do that every day. Even though it's a new habit, it feels good to do that and realizing that we have the rest of our life to cultivate new habits. We don't need to change everything right now. If we try to change everything right now, the probability that it will stick is quite low. We might be able to go through it with force for a week or two or maybe a month, but if it doesn't feel good, it, uh, it won't stick. And I know this sounds very simple, common sense, but we do have a tendency to try too hard. The no pain, no gain mentality has really infused the Western mindset. And if we are not careful, we just try too hard. And then we give up because it's like, oh, no, this is too hard. And so I see really this as a preliminary aspect of self-care. If we do want to take care of ourselves and cultivate new habits because we know and understand that they're healthy, we really have to keep asking ourselves, am I, am I tuning the, the dial of effort too high or too low? And so this is, a, this is an ongoing process that we, we can always Check in and having support like we have now coming together to then discuss things and hear what others are doing is is really helpful to have insight because if we try to do our work alone often we can get lost in our track so i'm really 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 grateful that you are showing up today for sharing this time we will have a bit of time in breakout rooms so we can discuss together certain things. And at the end of the session, we can also have question and answer or just comments. And I would love to hear from, from some of you or all of you, um, maybe some questions or some tips or some comments on how you're doing. Okay. So I'm gonna start breaking down the three modalities of movement that we talked about during the previous seasonal renew. And those three modalities were the first one walking, the second one playing, and the third one lifting. So these are three categories of movement that we can implement into our lives. They all have a scientific background onto why they're important. 
and and we can now discuss how can we implement these things into our lives. So the, let's talk about the first one, which is walking. So walking is, um, I would say, is is the most ancestral movement practice. We are bipeds, humans, we have two legs, and we have evolved with this curved, curved spine so that we can stand upright. And the architecture of our feet is so incredible with the, the arch of our feet being a little bit like a dome that can absorb um, the, the pressure of the body and bounce. And so our ability to walk long distances is really ingrained in our physiology and the science on walking is really incredible as far as the health benefits that it provides both physically but also mentally so if we can bring walking into our life into our daily life finding ways that we make sure that we are walking every day. This can bring a lot of joy and well-being into, into our daily life. Especially if every time we walk, whether it's a, a set amount of time that we decided to go for a walk and that's the focus of the activity, then it's easier to, to bring the, the focus onto how we walk. But there's also many occasions where we walk from our house to um to a, to a store or from the car to our place of work there's many many opportunities throughout the day of walking and what i'd really like to emphasize is whenever we're walking can we bring more awareness on how we are walking because when we do our posture can really improve. So if we walk mindlessly, maybe we've developed some wrong habits with our posture and then our, our walking is not so um, maybe enjoyable one, but also not so helpful for our posture and our physiology. So this is what we discussed during the seasonal renew is when we're walking, can we, try to feel tall. And an example that I really like is to carry something on our head. Can we try this together? Could I ask you to stand with me? If you have room. And then bring your, your feet about hip width apart. And then close your eyes for a second. And just have a sense of the weight of your body falling down into your feet. And try to notice if the weight is more on the front of your feet, towards the toes, or if it's more into the back of your feet or the heels. And still with your eyes closed, notice if your head feels like it's on top of your spine or if it's slightly leaning forward or if it's slightly leaning back. Now go ahead and place your left hand just below your belly button on your lower abdomen and your right hand on top. Now go ahead and relax your shoulders. And see if you can relax your lower abdomen just a little bit so that you can feel your breath moving down towards your hand. And then while relaxing your lower abdomen, which is a place where we tend to hold a lot of tension. If you can lean a little bit forward towards the front of your feet, 
and just feel the whole front part of your body. And then lean slightly back onto your heels. And bring more awareness to the back side of your body. Back of the legs, buttocks, all the way to the back of the neck and skull. And then lean onto one side. Feel that one side of the body. And then the other side. And then just start to make little movements where you might go forward, back, or to the side. Still with the eyes closed, the face relaxed, the shoulders relaxed, the lower abdomen relaxed. And just noticing how very small, simple movement while connecting to the body can feel very nourishing very soothing. And this is the feeling I'd like to invite you to explore whenever you go for a little walk. Is can I walk in a way that I am relaxing my body, I'm letting go of tension, and that I enjoy movement, I enjoy being embodied here in this beautiful body that we have. Slowly come to stillness in the center. And I'd like to offer a little movement practice we're gonna do for just a few minutes, which mimics in a way the movements of walking and we're going to use that as a little practice that can really make us feel what enjoyment, pleasure in simple movements can be. So go ahead and release your hands and gently bend your knees. I'm going to turn to the side, but you keep facing the camera. And I invite you to bring your shoulders forward. And then bring your shoulders back. Bring your shoulders forward. And then back. One more time. Shoulders forward. Feel the opening between the shoulder blades. And then shoulders back. Gentle opening of the chest. Now bring to the ears and slowly down, firming under your armpit. And slowly up, and slowly down. Now, we make a little circle, so bring the shoulders forward, then up, then back, and down. Go forward, up, back, and down. And let's continue making these little shoulder circles. But only do about 50% of the range of motion that you can. So we could try really hard and bring the shoulders as up and back and down as possible. I'd like you to do only 50% so that you really start to make a smooth, little movement that feels good, that doesn't feel like much effort. But we are still in gentle opening, inviting blood flow, and inviting to release tension. Imagine that you are unblocking any blockages that are present at the back or into your shoulder. And come to center. We're going to do the same with the hip. So bring your tailbone back and up. You're arching your lower back. And then bring your pubic bone forward. 
round your lower back. You bring the tailbone back and up. And you bring the pubic bone forward. Tailbone back. Now bend the knees, lower the hips a little bit. Pubic bone forward. Straighten the knees, lift the hips. So four movements, tailbone back, tailbone down, pubic bone forward, pubic bone up, back, down, forward, and up. And we are rolling. So again, making the movement as little as you need, feel no sense of strain, and actually, feeling that oh, this feels good. I'm opening my lower back, my belly. I'm doing simple movement in this area of the lower abdomen, lower back. It can feel quite tight and rigid sometimes. So can I bring the element of water into this movement? And if you can, we start bringing the shoulders to the same movement that we did at the same time as the hips. So we roll the shoulders and we roll the shoulders. If you can release, relax your face and jaw. And we're creating a little wave with the spine to see if you can feel that energy from the belly going up. If it feels good, just like me, you can involve the arms so you're lifting down, lifting and down, rolling up, rolling. Now stop with the right hand and do with the left side only. So only the left shoulder and the left hip are rolled. Can still hear me? Good. And now come back to the center, doing both sides at the same time. And then switching to the right side only. Holding the right shoulder and the right hip. Tipping the right foot forward. And this is like going on a gentle walk. Can you still feel your breath into your lower abdomen? Now bring the feet next to each other in the center. And let's do roll the left shoulder and then the right. Left and right. And this is like going for a walk. If I was to move forward, I'm going for a walk, or I can walk backwards. So I know it might look funny if you go walking like this in the street, but this is how you nourish your joints. Just making gentle movements, rolling actions, while being relaxed from your belly all the way to your foot. And if you want, you can start to play. You invite playing into this movement by just Feeling into the space, you can move more freely, maybe moving to the side. And just feeling like, ah, this helped me release any tension in my body. You can open the palms and lengthen your fingers, 
create a sense of lengthening through your body. Yes, this looks really good. You can move one foot forward, one foot back. And just tune into what your body needs. Where do you feel that it would feel good to open a space? And let's slowly come back to center, make the movement smaller. Slowly come to smaller movements. And then we're gonna place again the left hand on the lower belly, the right hand on top. And you might still make micro movements that are invisible to the outside. And then close your eyes. And just feel what inviting gentle movement does to your energy. To your sense of presence. To the feeling of lightness and enjoyment in your body. Let's take a slow, long and deep breath in together. And through the mouth, letting it out. And then you can gently open your eyes. And if you wish, come back to sitting. Ah. Does this feel good? Yeah, this feels really good. This is this is the type of yoga that I practice and I teach here in Spain. I'm based uh, in Spain. It's called Synergy Yoga. And the essence is how can we move in a loving way? How can my movement practice spread good energy and loving information to my body? Good energy has to do with blood flow. How can I promote good blood flow to nourish the cells of my body? By doing these fluid movements, active movements, where the whole body becomes a pump. And walking is what happens during walking. We contract and release the muscles one at a time, and this stimulates blood flow. So good energy is blood flow, and loving information is to be in a parasympathetic state while we practice our exercise? Can I be calm and relaxed while moving? Then we access the state of yoga, of union, of feeling connected to the body. And very often we associate exercise with effort, more tension, more stretching, more breathing. Actually, when we tense less, stretch less, and breathe less, we create more connection. We access this state of yoga and we don't have to do crazy postures to do that we can just do what we just did we roll the shoulders we roll the hips we do it in opposite direction and essentially this is walking so we can easily go for a walk and have this ah oh, nice feeling and this is a beautiful yoga practice cool so thank you so much for uh dancing with me and that takes us on to our second topic which is playing so playing we all used to play when we were kids oh i i like that some of you are taking the sweater off it means it's a good sign it means blood flow got improved and the body feels warm feeling warm is quite important and that means blood is circulating yet we don't need to have our heart racing no, we didn't have like the heart going fast, the breath going fast. We don't need to exercise hard to get good blood flow. So nice. Let's go back to playing. So when we were kids, we all loved to play. Just to go outside, climb on a tree, play with a friend, run around. 
and um, and then life gets serious, and uh, even our movement practices get serious. We have to do this routine, this amount of steps, etc. So there is a lot of sense in making an exercise program and having a plan, and um, and having the discipline to do exercise. I really believe that's important, but I think it's more important first to make sure we enjoy movement. And so playing is how can I move in a way that is fun? And very often playing exercises involved a partner or a friend. So it brings the social aspect of, of movement which we know is so important. If we want to stick to an exercise routine, it helps if we have a friend or a team or a community that we do this with. So what I'd like to do now is for us to learn from each other, how do we play? There's many options for playing, but instead of me suggesting some, I'd love for us to get into little groups we can introduce ourselves. Hey, my name is Ben. I am from France, but I live in Spain. Uh, maybe to say how many seasonal renew you've done, if you have done some, uh, just so we we kind of understand the 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 range of our community, and and then maybe you can share how do you play. How do you have playful movement into your life, and maybe you don't know. And that's okay. Maybe you can learn from each from others in this group, or maybe you have ideas of how you could start to bring play into your life. So, Tim, if you wouldn't mind to send us into breakout room, it's going to be short. No, we're going to be in groups of maybe four or five and uh, have a minute or two to share. So um, enjoy, and then we'll see you back into this room in a minute. Okay, welcome back, everyone. I hope you had nice little chats. Um, it was so inspiring in my breakout room to hear what everyone is doing, different things. Wow, from table tennis to judo um, to dancing, we we have many options for for playing and bringing social way of moving into our lives. So um, thank you for sharing. I'd like to just touch on our on our third um, movement modality, which really is the the form of movement that is probably the most researched uh, in in the science field, and has really a, an amazing range of health benefits. And I think that finding ways for all of us to implement some of that into our routine can be very beneficial. And this is lifting or lifting, or we can call this resistance training or weight training, which has to do with loading the body with weight. And it can either be our own body weight or we can use external weights such as um, dumbbells or barbell or medicine balls, anything that has a bit of weight. And Finding a healthy routine of resistance training helps us to maintain bone density, muscle mass. So on a physical level, it helps us stay strong. And that's also rela related to our ability to feel confident. There's a lot of research showing how self-confidence is improved by resistance training. And that has to do with our, our ability to feel strong. Not in a way that we're um, going to be stronger than some, someone else or have this competitive aspect, but just to feel that we can uh, bend down and pick up something or we can reach for something and feel coordination. So um, making sure that we keep the body strong has a big impact on our mental health as well. There's also a lot of research showing that regular resistance training helps not only regulate our metabolism, the way we process sugar, but also our mental health and how this helps to decrease, decrease symptoms of anxiety, loneliness, depression. So 
it is it is an important uh, modality of training. So, mm, what to share about lifting? I think the most important thing I'd like to say is that it doesn't have to be as complicated as it might seem. The research shows that just doing two strength training sessions per week is enough to have a significant impact. And that also just doing one set of a proper loading of the body is also significant enough to have an impact. So it doesn't mean that we have to go to the gym three to five times a week and lift heavy weights for an hour. We don't need to do that. We can just go twice a week and essentially pick two core, two main exercises and doing one to three sets of those after a proper warm-up is enough to have an impact. And of course, we can develop a program where we cycle through different intensities, et cetera. Um, we can make it more effective and we can work with a personal trainer to do that or we can look up online for certain programs. In, in the health coaching that I do, I work one-on-one -on -one with people. I can also help them develop a training program alongside with nutrition, et cetera. Um, but we shouldn't feel that the complexity prevents us from starting. To make it also very simple, there's really only four ways of doing a strength training exercise. Actually, only two, which is either pushing or pulling. And we can either focus on the legs or the like the lower body or the upper body. So this is why I'm saying four. There's essentially pushing with the lower body or pulling with the lower body and pushing with the upper body or pulling with the upper body. The simple way to think of this, the pulling with the lower body is a deadlift. Deadlift is learning how to lift something up from the ground. It looks like this. I don't know if you can see, but where we just bend down with the spine straight and we lift something. So I could just carry simple dumbbells of two kilos in my hands and I just bend my knees slightly and with my arms, my back straight, I'm just pulling a weight up. This is a deadlift. This is probably the, the most important resistance training exercise we can practice. And we have to learn to do it safely. So we start with not too much weight and we focus on keeping the spine straight. And this trains the whole back chain of the body, from the calves to the hamstring, the glutes, the lower back, and even the lats. So deadlift is the, is the pulling up. The, the pushing with the legs is either a squat or lunges. Lunges are often more safe for the lower back. It looks like this. So same thing, I could have my little weights in my hands and just step one leg back. And then I lower down with a straight spine and come up. So this is a lunge. Or if I don't step back and I do with both hands, then I'm doing a squat. And this is pushing with my lower body. So I have either pulling with the lower body, which is a deadlift, or pushing, which is either a squat or a lunge. And then with the upper body, I can do a, a pushing, which is like a bench press, or I push straight up, which is a shoulder press. And then I can pull either on the horizontal plane or pull down on the vertical plane. So these are the simple ways to, to do resistance training. Two times per week uh, is very effective. And each workout, picking one pushing and one pulling exercise and then building up on that. Um, there's much more we could say about lifting, but I really... Um, encourage you to ex to explore that it is a very powerful way to to incorporate movement in the body especially as we age and we want to keep these bones dense and the muscles strong so that we can really feel confident that we can um, be stable physically and then all the mental aspects are also coming with that so what I'd like to do now to finish our session it's almost almost an hour already time flies when we're having fun um, I just like to open for some question and answer. 
It can be questions about anything, whether it's seasonal renew, whether it's about um, your nutrition in between the seasonal renew or more specific to the movement modalities we just discussed, or if you just want to share something, uh, share something in your personal uh, journey that's significant and you'd like to express it to make it even more powerful for yourself to share or, or anything else. And you can just um, unmute yourself or raise your hand or use the raised hand. There's not so many of us, so it's, we can just find our way to question. Mandy, would you like to start? Uh, yes, I'd just like to know, if you're not going to a gym, mm -hmm. with, the, with the pulling exercise, what can you do at home instead yes. of having to go you, to a gym? Yeah, the, the most simple way is to buy some bands. Okay. There's uh, some bands. The ones that I use is called um, Fit Beast. If you look at Fit Beast, yeah, they, it comes with five different colored bands. Uh, different. They have different uh, amount of resistance, and you can hook. There's like little handles, and you can choose how much resistance, and you just wrap that around a tree or something stable in your house, yeah, or something up, and then you just pull either back or pull down and slowly mm -hmm. release. And uh, and that's the easiest way to work on your pulling um, upper body muscles. So I would say that having bands like that at home is a great way to, um, to not having to go to the gym. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I read in the chat, uh, where do you see cardio fitting into this? Oh, it disappeared from my screen. Let me pull it up. Uh, important for heart health, among other things. For sure. Um, cardio is important. I, I do see it as going walking regularly is an aerobic form of movement. And then we can do brisk walk or slight jogging if we want to just train a little bit more of that uh, aerobic system. Um, but I think that also lifting is also creating a, a me metabolic demand that also leads to, to these benefits. Um, so that's why I, I didn't choose to focus on uh, cardio as a, as a an extra modality. I think that if we do our walking, walking can be slight jogging or slight bicycling, and that's the aerobic cardio exercise. Um, but then incorporating lifting is, I think, um, probably more important than just doing cardio. I would love to hear you ask your questions rather than me reading them into the uh, chat. Anybody wants to pop in and ask a question? I just asked Ben. Hi. Oh, hi. Hi, Yvonne. Yes. Yeah, so, so, what well, two questions that I asked? One was, do you do individual kind of um, health training on Zoom yourself? Um, and particularly in relation to resistance training. And I guess the other thing is, is there a particular kind of nutritional diet? that's better for resistance training. Okay. Um, yes, I do individual one-on-one -on -one health coaching uh, online. We use Zoom and, um, and then resistance training can be part of the program that, I, that we co-create. Um, I don't lead the actual exercise session on Zoom, but I can create a plan and then we can discuss that. And uh, regarding the diet, I think for advanced, let's say, bodybuilders, things like that, there is a specific diet that's best for that. Otherwise, for most of us, a healthy, balanced diet is usually enough. The only thing we adjust with uh, resistance training is we want to make sure that we bring in nutrients within the 60 minutes after a weight training session. This is the time where the muscles are most receptive to amino acids and protein synthesis. So bringing some quality protein after a weight training session is quite important. Um, and then, so this is one of the things we discussed in our in the coaching session is 
is what to eat and when. Great, thank you. you you're welcome, Yvonne. And if if you're interested in this, um, just you can shoot me an email at ben at aroha dot com, and uh, we can discuss that. Okay, so just ben at aroha dot com. Yeah, and aroha with a with a minus a little. Yeah, Tim just wrote oh, it in the. You. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. Um, how many times a week would you recommend resistance training? Sorry I if you've recommend... said this. I had to miss um a few a bit of this as a little person woke up. So sorry if you've <laughs> covered this. No worries, no worries. It's always good to repeat these things. Um at least twice a week. I would say two or three times a week to have a, a routine where for each of these sessions, there are at least two core exercises of pushing and pulling. And um, yeah, so, and then we can cycle through. So usually the idea is to start with a low weight and higher volumes. So we do sets of about 12 repetitions and we focus on the form. And then we do that for... Um, for three to six weeks, depending on the length of our cycles. And then we move towards more weight and less repetitions. And so we can have like a, maybe a nine to 12 week cycle where then we take a little break and then we repeat from the start with a bit more weight. Um, but essentially two times a week, maybe three, it definitely has a little bit more, but I would say twice, would a, week twice a week is, is a great place to start. Okay, thank you. You're welcome, Charlotte. Mm -hmm. Susan had her hand up. Has have you asked your question yet? No, I don't think so. No, no, no. I just been listening. Um, I was um, <laughs> the gym is not a place that um is my favorite place to <laughs> to go to, but I found a pretty happy place with reformer Pilates, um, mm. with um. I think incorporating all that you're speaking about, Ben, um, mm -hmm. with a bit of play and some odd stuff that you can um, do 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 with it. So that might be thought for people who, like me, don't like the gym. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Sure, totally. No, it, it is a form of resistance training, mm -hmm. Pilates. Um, and with the reformer, you're, there is yeah. extra resistance, correct? Yeah. So, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for sharing, Susan. Great to see you, as always. Yeah, great to see you too, Ben. <laughs> Any other questions? Anyone? Comments? Insights? I just have one more question. Yes. How many sets? How many sets of the reps do you do? Saying do two of two exercises. So yes. How many? Yes. So you do twelve. So, yes. So what I would I what I would recommend is if you do a, two sessions a week and you do a proper session, so you do a warm up. Um, different ways to warm up, but then you pick two main exercise and do four sets. One warm up set with really low weight, focus on the form, and then three actual workout sets. And if it's the first phase of your cycle, you do re 12 repetitions and then you take a couple minutes break and then you do the second set, couple minutes break, third set, and then change the exercise, do the second exercise, one warm up set, and then three workout sets, and then a little cool down and stretching, and um, and that would be a a basic session. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Very welcome. Thank okay, you so, so much. <laughs> you're very welcome. It's been a pleasure to connect with you. Thank you for joining. Um, the next seasonal renew will be in august august 23 to 27 we'll have a fresh new menu and some new movement videos 
if you've enjoyed this there's more of that coming in the seasonal renew it's so such a great form of movement while we fast uh something very gentle but keeps the blood moving when we fast it's, it's very important and it's great um so you can head over the aroha website uh to find out all the details about the seasonal renew there's a a specific newsletter uh, for the seasonal renew you can sign up for and i think tim will send uh, a little follow-up email to this call where you can find all of this information and um, and then we're always available if you have any questions my email is there um, or there's other contact email on the website and uh, feel free to reach out with any questions you have about this program so thank you so much. I wish you a beautiful evening and I hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.